So I confess, I think I may have fallen down a rabbit hole. And that is the bucket hat <laughs> rabbit hole. So a couple of weeks ago, my family and I, La Familia, um, decided to go and watch uh, Maverick. It's a good movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. But in the previews, there was a Brad Pitt movie being advertised, and that was the bullet train movie. And I think it's coming up soon. Lo and behold, Brad was wearing a, you guessed it, a bucket hat. And I thought it looked really cool. Now, I don't know if it looked cool because Brad Pitt was wearing it or it was a cool hat. So, so I decided that I'd challenge myself to try to duplicate the hat. I decided I'd modify a pattern to see if I can achieve that same look. What makes the hat in that movie a little cool is it has a narrower brim, but it also has a really kind of interesting little band around the base. So I thought I'd bring you along and if it turns out, yay. If it doesn't, then it'll be a big flop. So. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like it, please click subscribe and come on in. First thing I thought was that I would try to draft it out and practice, do a practice run. And what I'm doing for that is I'm using a drop cloth. Excuse me. I bleached, so it's kind of a white, creamy white color. And I thought, hey, it's a drop cloth. I can't mess that up, I hope. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? I'm gonna take a pattern that I already have tried by Mood Fabric. It's actually this pattern right here. I'm gonna make it double-sided and I'm gonna make a bigger size because if you watched my other tutorial, you know that this hat was, I made it too small. But I may make the brim narrower and see how it turns out. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm thinking through this and on the base there's what looks like a band or a separate segment that's in the same color. So in order to achieve that, I'm gonna modify the base of the hat and I'm gonna need to make one base that's shorter and then cut it, actually make it and cut it apart to get an effect where there's two layers. I don't know if that made sense or not, but let's see what we can do. This is the original pattern and neglect the back part I wrote on it already with for something else. But allowance. Oh, this could be another half inch on the other side. So if I do it at two, you see the smoke coming out of my head. That'll be about right. I'm showing this like I know what I'm doing, but this is a challenge for myself and I have no idea if it's gonna turn out. <laughs> okay, I have four pieces for the brim. And if you're going to need interfacing, depending on the weight of your fabric, you may choose to interface two of them and leave two of them plain. It's a really thin fabric. You could interface all of them, depending on what your machine can handle. Then there are two pieces for the base. This is going to be the lining on the interior of the hat. And then two of the base for the exterior. These are the two panels that are going to be sewn half inch to add that interesting banding effect. And then two of the top. And again, you could choose to interface this, the, the tops to make it more rigid. And you could also Add interfacing to the base layers as well if you want the hat to stand up more. So what I did was I took the base, the pattern for the base piece and extended it by an inch all the way around from the bottom. And then I'm going to take a ruler and measure up two inches from the bottom all the way around and that's going to be the cutting line. And keep in mind this will be done once again for the second piece of the main exterior base. Cut along the marking. 
And then I'll go ahead and pin it right away. And when it's pinned, there'll be excess on each side because it's wider at the bottom, as you can see. So when you flip it up, that'll be normal. Another thing you could do is mark the center. And then pin from the center out. You really just want this top part to match. So if because you're you're sewing a convex to a concave piece, you may need to kind of work it in. If you need to use more pins, you can too. Okay, and repeat for the other side. What I'm doing here is I'm attaching the end to make sure that's lined up. So then, when I come along, I'll stitch it half an inch all the way down. And because I cut it an extra inch, it'll be exactly the same size as the pattern piece and the two lining pieces. Okay, so I'll repeat the process for the other exterior piece. See if this works out or not. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm gonna tackle are the exterior pieces, 2.5 millimeters, half an inch in. And Bella's birds just woke up. <laughs> you can hear back stitch at the beginning and end. Turn on the sewing machine too. It's probably hard for you to see because it's white. There you go. Now repeat on the other side. And I think I'm going to add a second top stitch just for interest because it looks really cool. So I'll go ahead and do another top stitching line one eighth of an inch from the last. I'll just use the presser foot that I have because it's narrow as a guide. I'll, do, I'll repeat that for both sides. Okay, now I'm gonna take the two pieces of the band and place them right sides facing each other and match up, make sure that all the seams are matched up. And then I'm gonna stitch half an inch across both short ends. Again, when you're pinning, you want to place a couple of pins right there where your seams are so that they line up because those will definitely be visible. So I've pinned this end. I'm going to flip it around and pin the other end. Making sure that those seams are matched up. Stitch down at a half inch seam allowance with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And back stitching, beginning and end again. Not perfect, but hey, that side's perfect. Well, almost. <laughs> All right. So we'll repeat the same process for the two lining bands, pinning both short ends and stitching all the way across half an inch seam allowance, 2.5 millimeter stitch length. So I'm gonna splay open the seam and top stitch down the sides and that'll help the seam allowance lay flat, but it'll also add some interest. And I'll do that for the exterior and lining pieces. The lining pieces is more just so it'll lie flat. I just unpicked this. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing. Here's a tip. To match your seams. Okay, so as you can see, that was better. Okay, so I'm splaying open the seams and top stitching down on either side, making sure not to catch the other side of the band. Changing the stitch back to three millimeters.
and repeat for the other side. And normally I would press, but this kind of drop cloth fabric works really well without. Okay, I'm going to repeat the, for the lining. Just lay open the seams again and top stitch down. So the next part is going to be attaching the top to the band. So I like flipping it wrong sides out. You can measure and mark quarters like on either side and then in the middle and repeat for the circle top to mark your quarters. Okay, so it's time to make sure that this fabric doesn't matter, but make sure you have the right, right side of the top to the right side of the back band and pin. And if you need to put little slits to stretch out the fabric to accommodate the top, you can go ahead and do that to get the top to fit in right. Then you have to work that in. And depending on your fabric, sometimes it gets harder to fit in and it'll feel like it won't fit in and that you need to cut some little slits in that. This fabric's actually pretty good, it seems like. So I will say after having done several of these that this is much easier. I think it's because of the looser weave of the fabric compared to some of the tighter cottons that I've done. So now you're gonna repeat the same process for the lining. I'm gonna stitch around at a half an inch, 2.5 millimeter stitch length, taking care to kind of guide it through this way, making sure nothing's stuck underneath. Wow, that was way different than having to sew tightly woven cotton. So I'm gonna repeat the process for the lining. At this point, you can also top stitch the seam downwards to add even more interest, and I think I'll do that. Just remember to flip it back to three in stitch length and keep checking underneath to make sure nothing's pinched. Starting to look good. I like the weight of this. All right, I'm gonna repeat the same for the lining. Okay, so the lining is done as well. Now I can take it and trim down the seam allowance about half to reduce the bulk. I'm using pink ink shears. Because this fabric is loosely woven, it tends to unravel, so I'm gonna do pink ink shears to help all right, so it's time to move on to the brim. So I'm gonna repeat the steps, which you take two of the pieces of the brim, right sides facing each other, pin them, and stitch down each of the short ends at a half inch seam allowance with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And because these are so short, I'm not even gonna bother pinning them, but you can if you want to. Back stitch the beginning and end. And don't forget to turn your stitch length back to 2.5. Okay, repeat the same process in which you press open the seam and add a top stitching detail. Just remember the three stitch length to three one eighth of an inch from the seam. repeat for both the exterior and the lining of the brim. Okay, now that both sides, the lining and the exterior are sewn, it's time to 
put them together, right sides facing each other, matching the seams and pinning all the way around and a stitch all the way around at a half inch seam allowance with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And again, I'm gonna pin on either side of the seam to make sure it's locked in really well and it doesn't shift to so have a good match. for the other side. Okay, I'm gonna trim it and then flip it right side out and top stitch it. Again with the pinking shears. Okay, flip it right side out. And you can kind of finger press it. This is where clips come in handy. Just to make sure that you're, you're rolled out all the way. And clip it. And again, if you're doing a different fabric, you can take it to the ironing board and press it. Okay, so once I've pinned all the way around or clipped all the way around, I'm gonna take it and top stitch it with a three millimeter stitch length, one eighth of an inch from the edge. And when you're top stitching, you just wanna make sure that the bottom's not rolling up underneath to where you can see. I wanna kind of keep it in the stitch half an inch away from the edge with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Making sure that nothing's caught underneath. Okay, so this is what you should have. So now I'll take the top exterior, put it on top, and I'll line up the seams and hem it all the way around, keeping the same distance of the band. And this is where a seam gauge can help, or you could use measuring tape. I'm gonna start with the seams and pin them, making sure that everything's lined up. And I wanna make sure that bottom row is stitching getting pretty thick. <laughs> Try not to stab myself. So the key is to get the band consistent as well as the little accent piece or the accent band. What will be really cool is to also dye that bottom part when you're first piecing it together. You could make it all kinds of colors. You could do a gray. That would be cool. And also with the top stitching, I was thinking you could top stitch it this way, but I think also vertically. And I think that his in the movie looks like he's got some ribbing going on vertically. So I could try doing something like that. Obviously that would be more time consuming, but it might be a really cool effect. So I'm just top stitching all the way around, making sure that I'm not catching anything underneath. This could get really thick. <laughs> I'm gonna go really slow. Just need a little press. Okay, so. The hat's all done and just pressing it now. And I'll show you what it looks like. I'm pretty pleased with it. I actually like the weight of this canvas drop cloth that has been bleached. 
it would be really cool to also dye once you've bleached the drop cloths. You could also dye it different colors. And I used white thread because that is what is on Brad Pitt's hat. So I wanted to try to duplicate it as much as possible. Oh, I'm just doing this the wrong way around. This might be better. Yes. Now you have to be careful when you order drop cloths online. I ordered this one from Amazon, but some of the drop cloths don't bleach as well. So you want to find ones that are bleachable. So like ones that are made out of straight cotton. And there you have it. <laughs> when I get closer so you can see. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and the pattern was from Mood Fabrics. I'll put the link down below. If you liked this tutorial, try one for yourself. It was kind of fun. I did it in a couple of hours in the afternoon and not a whole lot of supplies, just a drop cloth that's been bleached in a sewing machine. If you have any comments, also drop them below. Okay, make sure the pants aren't up. Okay. One, two, three, one more of these. 